Today we want to introduce to you a very interesting topic. It is all about creation story. We often hear people talking about story, how this world became into existence, into a reality. And so, with so many theories, science, the way they define how this world became into what is been known today. But when we look on the Bible, we see something which is really contrary to what we often hear. And that is the creation story of this universe, include our planet Earth. And our study for today is centered on the book of Genesis chapter 1, the old section. So we are going to study step by step and see what happened from one day to another. We really have to know where we came from, where we are, and where we are going. And that's the creation story. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. When we move to chapter verse 4, I should say, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face, face of the waters. Now, here we have a world. Before the creation story, God was there already. So there was never a time that God came into existence. God was there prior creation took place. Now, God made the heaven and the earth. When you move chapter 2, it says there that the, the earth was actually empty, without form. And chapter 3 will introduce to us the beginning, how God begins now to beautify this empty, this world be, uh, without form. And God said, let be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And verse 5, And God called the light day. And the evening and the morning were the first day. First day of the week. It is Sunday. I was talking to someone just recently when we talk about uh, this issue of creation. My friend told me that uh, he does really not believe on the chronological uh, days of the week. He say it to me because when we study about the last day of creation, we come to that later on. But just to give you an uh, idea how people define first day of the week. They say first day of the week is seven day. It's the seventh day of the week. But the Bible says the first day is the Sunday. So we count the day from left to right and not from right to left. The Bible says in the first day God did something and that was to bring the light. And God called that light day. Now, in the second day, God had done something which is different from the first day. Now, we are talking about the creation of the world, which, which took place on the six days. I mean, literal six days of the week. Now, here we have the first day, God brought into existence the light. And now, moving to the second day, verse 6, God said, let be 
a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide it, the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the water which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening, evening and the morning were the second day. So we see here, God made separation from the firmament. God called this space, this blue sky that we see, the heaven. And that is the second day creation. So when you are asked what was the creation that God made on the second day, the answer is simple and very concise. He divided the waters from the firmament. And God said again, let the waters and the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. We have here, and it was so, and God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the water called he seas, and God saw that was good. So, in the same process, we see here that God has made something which was different from the first day, the second day. And now we are on the day which God, by His word, He has brought the earth to appear, the dry land. When you come to science, they will teach you that eh, there was millions of years in order for this dry land to appear. And that is not true. Because the Bible is teach us that when God says in the dry land immediately come to appear and that was so good according to God's classification remember everything that God was doing was so good was perfect and God said let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth it was so. Now, and the earth brought forth grass, and herb healed seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. You see, in the third day, God has made something that which is different from the first day and from the second day. Again, we want here to review. We want, we'd like here to do a very uh, fast review. First day, God made light. And second day of the week, God has separated the water from the firmament. And he called this um, space heaven. And God called the dry land after he separated the waters, earth. And in the third day, God brought grass, vegetables, all kind of trees and seeds that that we see were made on the third day of the week. What is the third day of the week? It is Tuesday. So now we have here Sunday, God's bringing the light, and some Monday, the separation of the waters from the firmament in this space that we call heaven, and the earth itself, the dry a land with different kind of trees, vegetables, all these things 
were made in the third day. So those are days of the week. Let's proceed. What was the works that God did on the fourth day? We're talking about Wednesday, fourth day of the week. Let's read together. Verse 12 of Genesis chapter 1, it says, And the earth brought forth grass. We'd like to move fast. Let's jump to chapter thir verse 13. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And verse 14 says, God said, Let be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for season and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God, and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. In the fourth day, God has made something which is really different from the previous day as we have studied. In the fourth day, God made the two great lights, one to govern the day and another to govern the evening. We are told here that in this day, God also made the stars, the beautiful stars. So when you, when you look at the firmament during evening, during night time, you see different stars in heaven. Those beautiful stars were made by God on the fourth day of the week. What is the fourth day of the week? It is Wednesday. So we have Sunday, Monday, and we have Tuesday. Now we are on Wednesday, the fourth day of the week. Now, what was the work that God has done on the fifth day? The Bible will give answer to that question. Verse 20, and God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fall that may fly above the earth in open a firmament of heaven. And God created great walls, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winds fall after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fall multiply in the earth. And the evening, the morning, were the fifth day. The question was, what was the work that God has made in the fifth day? Remember, when God divided the waters, He separated the dry land from the waters, and He called, He gathered all waters and called them sea. At this present of time, there was no animals in the waters. Now, it took God to wait until the fifth day to create great animals that we, that we have in the waters, in the sea. So, any kind of space, any kind of animals in the water, either in the waters or river, they were made in the fifth, on the fifth day of the week. What is the fifth day of the week? Thursday. Thursday. Again, I would like to uh, overview, I would like to make a very fast review of what we have learned. This is a Bible study. First day, God create the light, and second day God created the firmament and divided the waters from it. God separated them 
and you call the dry land earth. And when you come to the Tuesday, which is the third day of the week, God created the grass and every kind of trees that we have. In the fourth day, God has made the two great lights, one to govern the day and the another one to govern the night, together with those billions of stars in our system, solar system. Now, in the fifth day, as we have said, God brought into the water different kinds of animals, big fishes. These were made according to the Bible, the Word of God, in the fifth day, which is Thursday. Now, let's see what was the work made by God in the sixth day. 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after its kind. And it was so. Remember, when God speaks, there is a power that comes from there. God speaks and things come, through, come into existence. A creation from nothing. Ex nilo. God is bringing things into existence out of nothing. There is a power from the mouth of God that brings things into existence. So when God says, this is what the Bible says, when God says, let the earth bring forth living creature, and immediately this thing comes through. Verse 25, God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. There is a, there is a, uh, a, a classification in every each creation when God says and when things happen, when things come through, when things come forth, God gives a classification, good and good. And what God made is actually good. Whenever God says things happen, and that is good. We have here a God who designed our universe, our world, our planet Earth, the best designer ever. God, the Creator. Let's proceed. Now, when we come to chapter, I mean, verse 26, we see the, a very special creation that God has made. That God did not just said and things happened, but that He even made something he took God's hands to mold that special creation among others creation. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of their hair and over the cattle and over all the earth and over over all every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. This is to contradict the theory of evolutionism. Evolution has thought people, has poisoned the mind of human being that the man came from the monkey. But I want to tell you, and I have good news, that you and I are, are not a product of a monkey. We were created by God. God designed us. He made us in His own image. And that's the good news. We are not monkey. Rather, we are a product 
of God's uh, hands, creation. We are God's, His own image. And in His own image, He has made us. And this is what the Bible is teaching us. God created man in His own image. There is no such term here, monkey, made a man, as the a, a evolution theory has been teaching people around the world. And unfortunately, people believe. I wonder how people they can believe on such kind of theory based on experimentations. based on footnotes and bibliography, internet. I wonder, even people who can think they are easily deceived by accepting and embracing that kind of teaching that man is indeed a creation, a, a product of evolution. And this is not true. For the Bible, as, as uh, uh, the Word of God says clearly, that the man has been made. He was created. Human being, a product of God's creation. And in the image of God, he was made. And verse 28 says, And God blessed them. So after God has made them, God blessed his creation. God blessed the man he has made. God blessed human being. And said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over all the hair, I mean the fall of the hair, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, all earth. And every tree in the which in which is the fruit of a tree yielded seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fall of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth. So we see in the fifth day, God has made something which is totally different from the creation from the first day, second day. Third day, fourth day, and fifth day. And now, here we are in the sixth day of the week, creation story. What is that that God has made? He made all these kind of animals, living creatures, including human beings. We can even name some of them, the cow. The dog, the lion, the elephant, the birds in the, in the sky, and so and so. God made them in the fifth, sixth, fifth day of the week. And it, it ended up that creation by made, by creating a uh, man, I mean, a human being. And this is the true story that the human being they were created on the six days of the week. There is no such millions of millions of billions of years from the theory, the bang 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 theory to evolutionism. There is no such kind of story in the Bible. We consider those kind of theory rubbish. Those are not true. Those are theories from man. But what God is teaching us, what God wants you and me to know, is that one day He created this earth that we are living in six literal days of the week. Six days, in the sixth day, God created you and created me. He created animals that we see. Those were made. On the fifth day. Now we are come to the last day of the week. So sixth day, now we move to the seventh day. What was the creation, 
that God has made on the seventh day. Kindly open, turn your Bible, and let's together read once again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. The Bible says, Thus the heaven and earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended. Meant to say, the seventh day was the, the end of all God's creation. Lit seventh day, literal seventh day of the week. What is impossible for men to believe is that uh, this universe were made, this earth were made by God in six days. It's impossible for an atheist scientist to believe that this universe, this earth, including our planet earth, especially our planet earth, were made in, in six days or seven days literal of the week. Seven days Seven literal week days of the week. For them, it's too, too ridiculous to believe. But the Bible, the Word of God, had said so. And we believe that He is His Word. He is a powerful God, creator. For God, nothing, there is nothing impossible. What is impossible for man, it is possible for God. And therefore, we believe that this earth, this planet earth, was made by God in seven days, in six days. In the seven days, God ended. The Bible says, God ended. In the seventh day, God ended all creation that He has made. And what happened? God ended His work which He has made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Verse 3. God and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made them. We see that in the last day of his creation. God, he himself decided to stop. In order for him to rest, not because he was tired, but he did, he said it in order to give an example for us from one generation, from Adam's generation to the last generation that that would come after Adam's. That on the seventh day we should rest, because God has rested in this day. He blessed this day. Not only that, and he even blessed, he even made this day holy. So you see that in this day, God made three things special which you cannot find in other days of the week. And those are the key words. God rest, God blessed, and God sanctify this day. It is a very special day, a day of spiritual refreshment. A day where we come to God, we come together in deeper communion with our God. A day that reminds us that one day this world was created. That's why we call a memorial day of creation. It is the center of God's creation. Seventh day, the Sabbath day. Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. Just this week, again I was discussing with um, one of my uh, Bible student interests. And uh, after he had learned the story of creation, he decided to share with his classmate what he learned from God's Word. And uh, his classmates uh, were so angry in a sense that they want to accept it. And they told him, no, 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 this is not true. The seventh day actually is the Sunday. But we learn in the Bible that the seventh day is the Sabbath day. 
The Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week, the last day of creation. So the first day is Sunday as well known. So even dictionary give us a very clear definition that the first day of the week is known as Sunday. And we come to the second day known as Monday. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as the fifth day. And we have the Friday, which is the fifth day. And finally, we have the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. The most important day in the creation story. Why we want here to emphasize? Because God made it apart. He separated this day from others. In this day, we don't see creation of animals, creation of vegetation, creation of separation from... No, in this day, we see God deciding himself to rest. For he had, he had blessed this, this day, and he declared it this day holy from one generation, from the generation which began with Adam, until to the last generation. In a sense, the Sabbath day is a eternal. The Son, the seal of God, the Son of God, the sign of God, it is eternal. The Sabbath day, which reminds us that one day we were created by our beloved God. May the Lord bless you as you continue to study His Word and seek His is all a spirit to interpret what you have learned. Shall we pray once again? Father, one, thank you for the blessings of studying your word. We thank you that we have discovered that we are not products of monkeys. Rather, we are a product of the creation that took place on the six days. We thank you for this divine revelation through us. Lord, we pray that may continually help us to understand more and more about you as we open this holy book. May bless these people who are listening to this message, that the Spirit will persuade them to understand deeply as they grow in their spiritual life. Thank you so much that uh, through this holy book you have revealed the plan of creation and the plan of salvation. We thank you for the assurance of salvation that was given in the life of Jesus. Thank you for hearing and answer our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.